Imagine if your phone, the smartphone, everybody has one nowadays, could save a life. Maybe not your life, maybe it's your child's life. But the whole idea behind how you can use this to save a life is come up with a great application. Two guys, one by the name of Dr. Andrew Lin and Hon Wen Chong, have figured out how to use a smartphone to diagnose pneumonia. Thank you for joining me, gentlemen. You need to explain this to me because I'm fascinated by this concept. Right. How can you diagnose pneumonia with a smartphone? So we've, what we've done is um, we've created this solution called StethoCloud as part of the Imagine Cup. Yep. And what the StethoCloud really is, it comprises of three components. So what we have here is a, um, the Stetho mic that we've prototyped. Yep. It's essentially a stethoscope that what a doctor like yourself would be using. Yes. Except it's got this funny little connector at the end that plugs into your smartphone. And we have an application that we've written um, for smartphones and we launch them and that's Try that up because I want to see, I'm not going to take my shirt completely off here, but I want you guys <laughs> to show me just how exactly, so when, when you're in a doctor's surgery, I suppose you bring your kid in or anyone, and Andrew you would understand this, yep. you come in and we want to listen to the chest to figure out whether there's a pneumonia there or something going on in the lungs. Yep. So basically what you've done is decided that your smartphone can do the same as what a doctor's ears can do. Is that basically what it is? Yeah, that's yes. absolutely right. So Hon, why don't you just sure. try to slow, just come <coughs> through here, come I'll show through. You. that's alright, come through here. All right, we'll just keep up with that. Jono, thank you. So you keep doing that, you yep. show everyone back there how this works. So you slide that up the back of the shirt. Yep. So Andrew, how did this idea come about? So this idea came about because Hong here had a chat with his mentor, the uh, Professor Professor Jim Black from the Nossau Institute, yep. Public Health Institute in, uh, in Melbourne, who said this is a big problem. Pneumonia is a huge problem and kills 2 million kids a year. It's, it's absolutely curable. 98% of the kids who die, die in developing countries. Yep. And the main problem there is access. So children can't get access to doctors. And I think what our, what our program does, what Said the Cloud does, is that it puts diagnosis of pneumonia in the hands of everyday people. So w when you say diagnosis, it's a matter of sitting there Getting this on your phone, maybe getting a little uh, stethoscope attachment, figuring out whether you need to be worried or not, and then going and seeing the doctor. Is that the long-term plan? Yeah, absolutely right. So I think the key step is that people are not worried enough at the start. So, so let's say you're in a developing country, you're not worried enough, yep. and the clinic may be 30 kilometres away, a whole day's trek or something. And you, you usually don't take the journey until your child's very sick, and by that stage, it's almost too late. How far off is this application for us to all have it on our phones? Hon, any idea? How's it going back there? I'll That's tell you good. one thing that you haven't worked on yet with the technology is the stethoscope is still cold. <laughs> you guys have got to figure out how to warm that thing up. So is this a long way away or is, are we talking months here? Um, so what happens is that we... I'll just show you, go back to the application. We've yes. taken the recordings. Now we're uploading it to a database up in the internet that we have. Yes. And it's uh, right now... It's going to tell us whether I have pneumonia or not. Exactly. It's going to do some calculations um, through a mathematical model and say you have pneumonia or you don't. So uh, regarding your question about how far we are away from this, uh, we have pretty much prototyped everything working, but we need to do a little bit more research right. um, just to make sure that the algorithms are safe. Um, for people to use. And you've got the, the Royal Children's Hospital involved in that? Yes, we're hoping uh, to uh, submit our research protocol for ethics approval very soon so that we can actually start collecting samples from live patients. Yeah, I think this yeah. is the most exciting thing about medicine, where it's going to go in the future. You guys, yeah. thank you so much for coming in and showing us. We just, just quickly, are we going to find out how long will we know until I have pneumonia? It should be about a minute. A minute, a minute away. All right, all right. So I'll we'll let you come see back what happens. Everybody at home, I know, is very worried right now whether I've got the motor or not. We'll get back to you. I'll tell you how I went. Uh, Andrew, Hon, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank what you very much. What a great invention. Yep. But still just Fantastic. a reason to take your shirt off, right, Rochi? <coughs> my shirt is he still on. He only took it off from the back. He only took it off from the back. Right? We're just right, trying to we pad it out because I'm desperate to find out. Are you, you all right? No pneumonia. Uh, Relax, guys. It's all good. That's and You've even got a treatment uh, plan, uh, a rationale. This is great, guys. I'm looking forward to seeing how this gets rolled out. Yeah, good Thank luck. Very good I luck. mean, the downside is it didn't look like you had pneumonia anyway. I wouldn't have <laughs> sort of rushed to that conclusion. That wouldn't have been my diagnosis just from looking at you. Uh, yeah, and, and look, I, I take my job seriously, but I wasn't planning on giving myself pneumonia just to no, make you... Uh, all, right. point. <laughs> all I'm saying is you could have gone that extra mile. All right. Although you didn't shave, so at least you made an attempt. Um,